Keir Starmer, the still brand new Prime Minister of the UK, is already worldwide famous, but for all the wrong reasons. You know how he became Prime Minister like a month ago? Well, it's been a wild ride since then. At first, everyone was all excited about him. The media was going on about how great it was going to be for Britain. They were saying stuff like, Britain is now a beacon of stability, and talking about how it was going to be this big reset for the country. I wonder, where have I heard that word before? Well, whatever. That didn't last long, because within a month, things have gotten so bad that other countries are telling their people not to come to Britain, including Kenya, India, and the UAE, and Nigeria, which have already put out travel warnings. It's, it's crazy to think about. And since Starmer uh, took over, there have been all these uh, riots and protests happening all over the place. It, it's been one thing after another. Like, there was this terrible incident where a British soldier ended up at the wrong end of a sharp, pointy object near some barracks in Kent. And then in this seaside town called Southport, there was this horrific attack. It, it, it's just been awful, and people just want to make sure that children are safe. The Stormers have uh, been trying to deal with all this by holding press conferences. I mean, uh, sometimes when he feels like it. But it's not going well for him, because people have started calling him two-tier care because of how he's handling different situations. I can't remember ever seeing the country this mess up. Because even Elon Musk has been openly tweeting the hashtag two-tier here. And that's pretty heavy stuff. And that's why there are rumors that they want to crack down on social media users. But I have another video coming on that exact same topic. So right after the tragedy happened at Southport, there were these anti-Islam uh, riots. Some people even went and attacked a mosque there. Part of it was because there was this fake news going around online saying that the perpetrator was a Muslim immigrant. But it's also because there's been this tension building up between Muslim and non-Muslim communities for decades. It turns out that he wasn't even Muslim. He was a 17-year-old with a Rwandan background. But anyway, this set off a whole bunch of protests all over the country. But this past weekend, things really went off the rails. In these towns called Tamworth and Rotherham, people actually set fire to hotels where asylum seekers were staying. And, and there was this video going around of a guy dying, uh, doing that kind of salute in Sunderland. Someone even burned down a building right next to a police station. This, this is crazy. There was looting, thuggery, just all kinds of horrible stuff going in. By the way, this image is not of those events, and you know it because in this image, you see that the police actually showed up to do exactly what? I don't know, but it wasn't just one side causing trouble. There was this group called the Muslim Defense League that showed up in places like Bolton and Blackburn. They were uh, doing not so friendly things. And the police were trying to keep the left-wing and their right-wing protesters apart. But some places, like Liverpool, were just total chaos. So Starmer had another press conference after all this. And he said that he was going to crack down on the far right and spend money to protect mosques. But here's the thing. He didn't say anything about the violent counter-protests or about punishing the Southport murderer. That's why people are so upset with him. And people are starting to point out that Starmer has got a history of treating different groups differently. Like back in 2020, during the BLM protests, he was all about addressing systemic racial discrimination. But now, with these riots, he's just saying that the motivation doesn't matter. It's like he's got a different standards for different situations. I think there's a war for that, right? But get this, it turns out that Stormer was actually part of some riots himself back in 1986. He even bragged about it in a campaign video a while back. But now he's talking about having this 24-hour courts to prosecute the current protesters. 
is like, <laughs> where's the consistency? And at the same time, at the same time, all this is happening, there's this plan to let out something like 40,000 inmates early because the prisons are so overcrowded. Some people are worried that might include members of this grooming gangs we've been uh, talking about. It's just adding to the whole mess. And it's just not, uh, not just a stormer that's acting weird about all this. The police seem to be handling things differently depending on who's protesting. In some places, they literally ran away from rioters. In others, they just stood by why people vandalize the stuff. So, but then they crack down really hard on these patriot protesters while seeming to go easy on the Muslim gangs. It's like there's no consistent approach. Feature again, police doing, I, I don't know, I, I have no clue. The media's being strange about it as well. There was this thing where the BBC cut off a former police chief when he started talking about how all these events might be connected. They seem really nervous about how they report on this stuff. And get this, the Home Secretary, Yvette Cooper, went on TV to answer questions, but the interviewer was her husband. Talk about an easy ride, right? It's not exactly hard-hitting journalism when you're being interviewed by your spouse. Well, except when your wife wants to know who is that Samantha that you keep messaging all the time. Some reporters are trying to give a more balanced view of what's going on, but it seems like a lot of them are getting told to back off when they do. It's like nobody wants to really dig into what's happening. So, yeah, since Stormer became prime minister, things have just been getting worse and worse. There's more violence every day, and it's not just from the far right, but from this Muslim Defense League guys as well. Some people have been saying for years that this was going to happen because of all the mass migration. They're saying that British people kept voting against it, but nobody in power ever listened. Now, that doesn't make the violence okay or anything, but it helps explain where all this anger is coming from. The Stormer saying he wants to prosecute the criminals, which is fair enough, but people are starting to wonder if he's treating uh, white and not white offenders the same. And there's this uh, worry about uh, Rando that uh, labor might use all this chaos as an excuse to bring in more surveillance and control over free speech. You know how it goes. Never let a crisis go to waste and seize the opportunity to become a full-on surveillance state. And after all this violence, Stormer's response has been pretty weak, if you ask me. Okay, turn on some pink lights, uh, but he only seems to do these big press conferences with it's about white British people doing crimes. If it's anyone else, it's got a different standard. It's like he's scared to address the whole situation head on. It's no surprise. His approval rating has dropped to just 3%. 3 percent 3 can you believe that? It's like Stormers failed before he even really got started. The whole country is a mess right now, and I honestly don't know how it's going to get better anytime soon. It's like we're stuck in this cycle of violence and nobody knows how to break out of it. And you know what's crazier? This is all happening just a month into his time as prime minister. Imagine what it's going to be like if this keeps up for years. It, it is scary to think about. People are feeling let down on all sides. They voted for change, but it seems like they are just getting more of the same old problems, just with a different face at the top. It's a real shame because I think a lot of people had high hopes when Starmer took over. They thought maybe things would calm down, that uh, we would have some stability, but instead... It feels like everything's just gotten more tense. It's like the country's a powder keg and we're just waiting for the next spark. I don't know what the solution is, but something's got to change. We can't keep going on like this with different groups at each other's throats and the government see seeming like it doesn't know what to do. It's going to take some real leadership to get us out of this mess. And right now, it doesn't look like Stormer's up to the job. But hey, I guess we'll see what happens. It's only been a month, after all. Maybe things will turn around, but from where I'm sitting, uh, this doesn't look good.
But I would love to know what you think about this in the comments. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Battle Language Guy. Much love and bliss.